Shalom, Yasharala Shalom. This is Akadash Alahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakata. Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty. And Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Right? And um, I have a, a quick lesson, I'm try to keep it real quick. You know, um, about pressing forward, man. Keep moving forward in this walk. You know, this walk get very lonely. You know, it get very hard in this walk. You know, and it get very um, sad and sorrowful. Because you see, you look around and you see family, you see friends stuck in their ways. And you know what's about to happen. You know what's coming. You know what type of judgment the Lord is about to bring on this earth. So, you know, it hurts to see your family, you know, still going against the words of the Heavenly Father. Even though you have Christian family members, you know, they, they be in the word, but they don't be in the word like they supposed to be, you know, with the correct doctrine, with the correct understanding, you know, um, they probably church goers go to church every Sunday, you know, and um, they probably pray over their food. When y'all sit down and have a family dinner, they'll sit there, they'll pray over their food, so they appear to be godly, but they be denying the power thereof. You know what I'm saying? But it's on you. You know what I'm saying? Nobody else. It's on you to stay focused and stay diligent in this walk. Um, you know, um, it gets hard, man. It gets hard, you know, being an outcast of the family. And, and everybody think you're going crazy. You know, everybody thinking you're taking the Bible too serious. And, um... Your family, you know, they're going to be the ones that turn their back on you. You know, they're going to be the ones that give you up in that day. You know what I'm saying? A man's foes should be there, be um, that of his own household. So basically, it's on you, man, to stay focused in his walk and work out your own salvation and keep pressing toward the prize. We want our crown of life, man. We want to earn that. You know, we want to hear a um, um, job well done. You know, my my faithful servant. You know what I'm saying? Um I'm just trying to encourage brothers to keep pushing forth in this walk, man. We with you. You know what I'm saying? We with you. I'm going to start off with the book of Luke chapter 9 and verse 59. And it reads, And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Yahweh I said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of the Most High. Right. Verse 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. <laughs> right. Uh, verse 62. And Yahweh said unto him, no man having his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of the most high. And, and Yahweh is absolutely right, man. No man looking back, you know, looking on whatever it may be, you looking back to go help somebody do something, you know what I'm saying? Like you putting things behind, things that are behind you before doing the work of the heavenly father, man. You can't do that. You can't do that in this walk. You got to keep pressing toward the prize, man. No man having his hand on the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom, man. You can't look back. And that's spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Not just looking back, turning around, looking back. No, you, you spiritually, you know, looking back and dwelling on your past life, man. You dwelling on things that don't matter no more. You know what I'm saying? Let the dead bury their dead, man. Why he called them dead who who alive burying a dead person because they spiritually dead, man. They spiritually dead. That's why he say let the dead bury their dead, you know, because they're spiritually dead. They don't know what's going on, man. But you know what's going on in this walk. You know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? You you got to follow your house shot. Just like he said, you ain't going to be able to follow him with your hand on the plow and you looking back. When you leave the world, you know, when you leave the world, you must leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? You can't go back to the world. He said, be in the world, but don't be of the world. You know what I'm saying? You can't go back into the world once you don't got the knowledge that it's true, man. You know? All right. So um, let me get the book of Philippians chapter three. And I'm going to start at verse 13. So like it, bear with me. 
Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, and it reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things that are before. Right, man. So you must forget about those things that, that's behind, man. Forget about those times you used to hang out with your homies, chasing women, smoking weed. You know what I'm saying? You got to forget about that. You got to forget about that dream you had of being a, a famous rapper, you know, rapping about folly and madness and prom promoting adultery and violence to your people. You got to forget about that. You got to get that out your head. You know what I'm saying? When you come to serve the most high, man, you got to be on point, you know, sober, vigilant. You know what I'm saying? You got to be on point. And um, verse 14, it say, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of the most high and Hamashiach Yehawashiach. You know what I'm saying? You got to press toward that mark and that prize. And what's that prize, man? The kingdom of heaven. You know what I'm saying? You want our Lord and Savior to give you that crown of life, man. That's what we aiming for. And you got to always keep that in mind. You know what I'm saying? Crown of life over everything else. You know what I'm saying? You got to, you got to, um, it's how bad you really want it, man. It's how bad you really want it. If you, if you lukewarm in this truth, you're going to get spewed out. You know what I'm saying? If you have a, um, a false understanding of the scriptures or you, you being, um, seduced by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils taking heed, the doctrines of devils, you, you're not going to make it straight up. You're not going to make it. You know, um, the only way to make it is to keep pressing forward, man, to keep pressing forward, keep these laws and commandments, keep the faith in his son, man, and keep pressing forward. Right. So let me go to Luke um, 17 and 32. The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 32. So like it, bear with me. This is the book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 32, and it reads, remember Lot's wife. You know what I'm saying? Remember Lot's wife. What happened with Lot's wife? You know what I'm saying? What happened with Lot's wife? She looked back, you know, after, you know, the most high told Lot to tell his wife, you know, don't look back, keep, keep pushing forward. And what she did, she looked back. She didn't literally turn around and look back. She was dwelling on her past. You know what I'm saying? She wanted to go back to Gamor, Sodom and Gomorrah. She wanted to go back. You know what I'm saying? She was looking back. She wanted to go back into the world, basically. That's basically what she did, right? She basically wanted to go back into the world, right? And it say, um, verse 33, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. So if you're looking to um, save your life, you know, your old ways, your old habits to be with old friends, you know what I'm saying? You're going to lose your life. If you're looking to save your life, you're going to lose it. And if you lose your life, meaning, you know, you come out the world, you stop celebrating these traditions of men, you stop breaking the most highest laws and commandments, you know, start keeping them to the best of your ability. You're going to lose your life because you put in a way things that you love for the heavenly father. You know what I'm saying? You making, you presenting your body as a living sacrifice. You, you sacrificing things that you like to do for the heavenly father, for the things that he wants you to do, that he needs you to do to sustain life. You know what I'm saying? Cause anything outside of these commandments and um, the faith in his son is death. You know what I'm saying? It's death. And it ain't just, oh, you die, you go to the casket. No, you spiritually die out here. You know what I'm saying? When you look around, when you go outside and you look around, I'm out here in Vegas. So when you go outside to the Vegas Strip or somewhere and you look around where it's a nice amount of people, all you see is dead people walking, man. It's just dead people walking. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what's going on. They don't know how their mind work. They don't know how the Lord work. They don't know how his only begotten son work. You know what I'm saying? They don't know how life really truly is supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's sad. You know, um, let me go to the book of wisdom of Solomon in the um, Apocryphal chapter 10 and verse seven. So like it, bear with me. This is the book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 and verse seven. And it reads of whose wickedness, even to this day, 
the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony. And it's speaking of Sodom and Gomorrah. The wasteland that smoketh is a testimony. And the plants being in the plants bearing, bearing fruit that never come to ripeness. And a standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul. Right? So that unbelieving soul was Lot's wife, man. The most I say remember Lot's wife. Because she got turned into a pillar of salt for really not believing her husband. You know what I'm saying? For being unbelieving. And and those that look back and dwell on their past and want to go back into the world, you you truly don't believe. You're an unbelieving, an unbelieving soul. You know what I'm saying? So remember Lot's wife, man. And, and always think about her every time you want to go back into the world. Every time you want to look back and um bring out that old man, you know. People in the truth, you know, it's a testimony at the same time, but still a lot of people in the truth, they like to look back and talk about the things they used to do or who they used to be. And they be wanting to be that again. You know what I'm saying? They be wanting to go back to that, you know, so be careful when you bring up your past and, you know, and you talk about it a lot. When you hear somebody talking about their past a lot, that, that usually means they want to go back to it and do what they used to do in the world. You know what I'm saying? So be cautious of that, you know, be cautious of you dwelling on your past, you know, and be cautious of people that's around you. That's always constantly bringing up your past, you know, because a lot of times they want to see you go back to doing what you used to do, you know. And um, uh, let me get the book of Genesis, chapter 19 and verse 17. Okay, this is the book of Genesis, chapter 19 and verse 17, and it reads, And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life, look not behind thee, neither, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed, right? So that's the angel of the Lord talking to Lot, telling him what to do, you know, giving him, give him the blueprint. You know, he said, look not behind thee, look not behind thee, right? And that's what Lot told his wife, right? The same the same exact thing that the angels told him to tell them, that's what he told his wife, right? And um, I'm going to jump to verse 26 real quick, right? But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. So that's what happened to Lot's wife. You know, she looked back, you know, um, Yahweh said, no man having his hand on the plow, on the plow looking back is, is fit for the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't fit for the kingdom. She kept dwelling on her past who she used to be. You know, you're not that no more. You got to keep pressing forward. And that goes into, you know, you, you women, you know what I'm saying? You ribs, you know, listen to your husband, man. If your husband is in this truth, in this walk, man, hearken unto your husband because the Lord is really dealing with your husband. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is really dealing with your husband. The Lord can tell your husband something and he presented to you. You know what I'm saying? It could be life or death. You know, the decision you make, whether you choose to obey your husband or not, it could be literally life or death. You know what I'm saying? And it don't always have to be you in the casket. It can be a spiritual death. You know what I'm saying? So really take heed to a man of the Lord, man. When when the Lord speak, you know, he speak through his prophets, man. He speak by the mouth of his prophets. So, and that's a prime example of Lot's wife. You know, she did not hearken to her husband. So she didn't hearken unto the Lord. And she looked back. She was dwelling on her past. You know, she wanted to, to be in the world still, you know, follow the traditions of men, the customs of men. She didn't believe. Just like in the days of Noah, when Noah was prophesying the destruction, ain't nobody hearkened to him. And they always destroyed. And the same thing, man. Keep pressing toward the prize. Don't look back, man. Keep moving forward. Right? Um, let me get the book of Hebrews. <sighs> so like it, bear with me. Get the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse, I'm going to start at verse 35 and it read, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. 
So cash not away your confidence, man. You have a great recompense of reward when you when you don't cast off your confidence. You know, keep pressing forward. All right, verse 36. For ye, for ye need, so like it, for ye have need of patience. And when you go into that word, patience is mean to suffer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, verse 36 again. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of the Most High, ye might receive the promise. And we all know who the promise is for, you know, the children of Israel, you know, um, verse 37, for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. You know, the Lord will not tarry, man. He said he was coming. He going to come. You know what I'm saying? He said he was going to deliver you and redeem you. He's coming. The Lord is not a man that he should lie, man. Um, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So the just shall live by faith, you know, and um, faith is an action word. You know what I'm saying? When you have faith, you you perform the law. You know what I'm saying? You you keep his laws to the best of your ability. You rehearse the righteous acts. You keep his feast days, his high holy days. You know what I'm saying? You keep the Shabbat. You keep it holy. You keep his commandments to the best of your ability. That's That's faith, man. That's faith, doing the work, performing the law. He said, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You know, if any man, you know, stop doing the work, you know, stop keeping the commandments, go back into the world, start keeping the traditions of the man, the most I say his, his, his soul shall have no pleasure in him, right? Verse 39, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And that's us, man. We're not going to draw back to perdition. Perdition is utter destruction. You know what I'm saying? So if you go back into the world, that's utter destruction. Remember Lot's wife. That's utter destruction. Remember the days of Noah, you know, when everyone was destroyed for not hearkening to the, to the words of the Most High. It's utter destruction, man. We not of them that draw back. We cut from a different cloth. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to go back into the world. We're going to get deeper into this walk, man. We're going to get deeper into this walk. That's us. That's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to read verse 39 again. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul, man. Do you believe your soul can be saved? You know, doing what the most I do? Because I damn sure do, you know. And my brothers, you know, they damn sure do. The people I surround myself with, they damn sure do. You know what I'm saying? And um, you got to you gotta keep pressing toward the prize. You got to keep pressing toward the crown of life, man, the kingdom of heaven. That's what we all want, you know? Let me get the book of Psalms, chapter um, 85 and verse 85 and verse, um, so like it, bear with me. I'm going to start at verse 8. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 85. My, my, my daughter done wrote all that in my Bible, but this is the book of Psalms 85 and verse 8. And it reads, I will hear what the Most High Yahweh will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly, right? And folly is foolishness, man. Most I say he going to uh, preach peace, you know, speak peace unto his people and to his saints, you know, but let them not turn again to folly, man. You know, you get the word of the heavenly father, you get the gospel, you know what I'm saying? Your mind become healed, you know, you start moving different in, in, in um, the path of righteousness, right? And then you turn, you turn back to the foolishness, you know what I'm saying? One of your old friends pop up and tell you to come hang out and y'all just doing, they still on the same folly. You know, they still doing the same thing that you used to do in the world and now they bringing you back into it, man. Don't do that, man. The most I say, uh, let them not turn again to, to, to folly, man.
yeah, 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 yeah,